because we see him, I see him, as an extremely important artist for this period after the Second World War. He is relatively unknown, though not in Poland, of course. Um, but he seems to me to be a, a very important figure for us to understand this period after the Second World War, when a lot of the assumptions that the generation in power today holds to be true were formed. These assumptions about division between East and West Europe, these assumptions about capitalism good, communism bad, these assumptions about the power and authority of the United States, all these were formed in this period. And what you see in Robleski is an artist struggling in a different context with the power and authority of the Soviet Union, with the after effects of, of the Second World War, which was much more destructive in Poland than it had been in the Netherlands. Um, but, but struggling with it in a different way than, for instance, the Cobra artist did here or Ecole de Paris artist did in, in Paris. But what you see is an artist trying to deal with the trauma of what happened in the Second World War full on, actually to really try and deal with it as an actual fact. But at the same time, literally on the same canvas in some cases, back and front, trying to develop a, a, a broken universal language of how we can still be human after what we did, after what Europe did to itself. How can we still be human? Is it possible? I think that question which also Carol Appel or, or Constant or Konai deals with, which Bazin tries to deal with in Paris, is being dealt with by Robleski in a very different way. And I think you don't have a picture of a Europe, maybe even a world, after 1945 without adding Robleski to this mix. If we don't have Robleski, we leave out all the trauma and we try to go back to childhood or we try to go back to universal language. But we have to have the trauma there. If we don't have the trauma, we have no hope of ever coming out of 1945, still today.